Core. Hey everybody, welcome back. The question of the day, war, what is it good for? On top of that, how do you do it? Well, you know, if you really want to know how to conduct war, there's a lot of good books out there and uh, a lot of good generals to read about. And uh, for this war, Marvel Strike Force, you got some generals out there on your own. And we're all going to tell you our different uh, philosophies and approaches. And that's the point of this video is to kind of talk to you about uh, what you could be doing in uh, your specific alliance war. So there's a lot to a lot of stuff being discussed, uh, a lot of different approaches. And I think by the end of this video, you'll kind of get a gist of how you might want to approach this. Um, and it could be from a multitude of angles. So uh, first, I'm going to talk to you guys about rooms, uh, not necessarily the specifics of each room, but just that's that's point number one, bullet number one, if you will, you got to know your room layout, what is your strategy. So um, on the screen here, you can kind of see that there is a, uh, you know, a multitude of rooms. Uh, at this point, most of us probably are starting to learn what each one of these rooms do. Uh, you know, you can kind of click where the bridge is, you know, worth a certain amount of points. It's kind of self-contained and, you know, does its own thing. Uh, engineering's got some adjacent buffs. Security has adjacent buffs. Reactor's a self-contained room. You know, the armory, barracks, med bay, and I think it's even the hangar have some global buffs. Cargo, cargo bay has a uh, an adjacent buff um, but you kind of get the gist here is like so you know what's the right thing to do here is what you you want to you know do i want to put my you know bridge um you know in a security here so that way it, you know i get a certain buff in my bridge if they come for a certain direction or you know maybe i want to have my engineering you know next to my bridge or maybe i want to have um you know my bridge you know up over here so it actually gets buffed by both you know different uh, adjacent rooms that can give you know make your bridge more difficult if that's what you want same thing with the reactor maybe you you know move your reactor to, uh, here and it's kind of like okay uh, that's what I want my reactor to be you know is in that spot um, or do you want to actually you know have your global buffs at the bottom um, you know where you kind of stick these things here you know it's 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 all over the place um, you know there's some people who you know, maybe you want the bridge at the bottom so no one gets that. You know, you want your reactor at the bottom so no one gets that because it's, you know, worth more points. There are going to be a ton of different approaches to this. Tons. You know, and I'm going to tell you there's not necessarily one specific right way. There's some ways that are going to work better for some alliances and there's going to be some ways that work better for other alliances. And even your alliance, depending on some other strategies that you might take, your room placement could um, vary based on what those strategies are. So, you know, there's some general rule of thumbs you're definitely going to want to kind of approach. Um, certain rooms you want to, you know, take that should take priority in protecting. How you protect those and where you place those, um, you know, is really going to come up to you guys and kind of like, well, I want to put an adjacent buff next to it or I want to put my hardest defense in there and make people grind on it. So, you know, the top priorities, you know, generally speaking, point wise are obviously bridge and reactor, but buff wise, it's those globals with the, you know, armory barracks and um, med bay, you know, a hangar. Eh, OK, um, you know, and then you've got your adjacent. So and then, you know, if you've got your flight decks. You can't move. So there's they're just chilling there. You can there's a bunch of different approach to the flight decks as well, where you're, you know, maybe you make them hard, you know, maybe you make them soft. I don't know. I don't know why you'd make any room soft at this point, but. Uh, you could, you know what I mean? You could do that. So anyway, point of this part of it is just saying like, you got to think about the rest of your strategy, which I'm going to talk about some points here and really kind of how, uh, you know, those different things um, can affect your over, your overall strategy. And that's, that's really kind of, you know, step number one. So, you know, part tied into that, you know, that how you do your defense is obviously important as well. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, slots one through, uh, you've got these different slots in here where you're kind of seeing one, two, three, four. And, you know, I think at this point, again, everybody knows that's where you can put an individual team. So um, depending where you have those and what you want to do, you know, all that stuff can kind of determine, you know, what's happening next. So, you know, let's just, you know, click on a flight deck here. So for instance, you know, this, and this is just someone who's got their defense in there, not, not such, but you might decide, you know, who you want to put in these rooms, you know, your certain teams and, you know, how you kind of want to attack um, or defend certain things. 
Um, you know, some people, this is obviously one of our lower players that we've got on the flight deck because you know, might not want to put a lower player in a, um, you know, critical room. So, you know, flight deck, it sucks losing 50 points, but all things considered, there's no room effects, you know, it's kind of like whatever. So, um, you know, that type of thing is important to understand as a player. And this is where it gets your strategies can, you know, I don't think there's going to be a meta strategy unless you're getting crazy into the game as far as dictating what everybody does, understanding what everybody in your alliance's rosters are. And kudos to you if you can do that. I, you know, um, parents, you know, working a, um, a job outside of this. I, I love the game and I really love Alliance War and I've spent a crazy amount of time doing it for the first two wars. But I'm guessing most of us are probably not going to have a lot of time to go through everybody's roster, think about what they should have on defense. All that. So you kind of got to leave it up to your player base a little bit. But you kind of want to give them some, you know, guidance here. And, you know, for this person, we knew they were weaker. So we put them here and just said, hey, look, just do your best. You know, pro I'm guessing we probably told this person to keep some teams for offense. But, um, you know, there's nothing really crazy here for, you know, anybody to, you know, freak out about. So that's kind of the step two after room placement is, you know, talking about, you know, how you set up each individual player um, in the map. And on top of that, it's like, so maybe – you know, tied with that is maybe you want certain rooms to be, you know, heavy on defense. Maybe you want some to be heavy on offense. I don't, I mean, reactor and bridge are, you know, a lot of points. Maybe you want to have those people, you know, stack up tons of defense in there so they don't break. Same thing could be said for those global buffer rooms. Um, you know, it's, but you, in my opinion, you want to have some sort of bat. What, one, th let me say before I get there, um, is you want to have some sort of balance. Um, I was going to jump ahead and say, do not go full out attack. It doesn't work. It's not going to work, you know, unless the other team and you just unless you fight another person who's going all out attack and then it's the first one who wins, um, probably based on, you know, active players. So um, is, there's some mix between offense and defense here. And, you know, if you go crazy on, um, you know, with your whole alliance attacking versus not leaving much defense, it's probably going to bite you in the butt. So. You know, and I was, like I said, I was kind of alluding to where you want your offense and defense as an alliance. You know, that could dictate where you place rooms, like I was just saying. Maybe you want your heavy defenders here. Uh, maybe you want them up here so they don't get to anything below. Uh, all these things are going to be dictated by what your alliance is made up of um, as far as rosters and type of people. You know, are they active? Do they have really strong rosters? That type of thing. And you've got to factor all of these things in. If you don't, um, it can be very, very difficult to figure out and uh, approach this thing. Okay, so my me my next bit, and I wish I could show an attack here. I don't think I can. Yeah, so it's like, uh, let me just click war time. I don't, I think, yeah, okay. So I'm going to go back here to the set defense to just kind of show you my next point here. So the next point to me is coordination, talking, communication, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a key aspect of this mode. Uh, if you want to be successful at what I'll call a higher level, not the highest level, because that's a given. Like if you're going to go against the top 10 types, you got to be talking, you got to be coordinating. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the uh, Legion of Cabal picks, but they've been just smoking whoever they're playing. So I'm guessing they're not even coordinating. They're just like, yeah, go kick ass, you know, and people who are they're playing against them are probably like, well, this is a loss. So just kind of unfortunate. Hopefully, you know, Fox next gets some of the top five against each other at some point. It's no fun if, uh, you know, and it's March Madness time, but it's no fun if the North Carolinas play the Kansases nonstop. You know, you want, you want, uh, or I'm sorry, if the North Carolinas play the, you know, Cinderella's nonstop. You want to get that North Carolina Duke game. You want to get those high level Kansas, uh, just, you know, where it's really the blue buds, you know what I mean? Michigan State's. You know, those type of schools where it's just solid, solid. You know, I'm going to get a bunch of comments now. Michigan State's not a blue blood. Whatever. You get the idea. High-level schools um, out there that are, you know, playing. You want to see those matchups, and hopefully, you know, there's a way to get them to that point at some point. Maybe at the season end where it's really kind of dictating the top couple spots. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. So there are a couple tools um, to do this, and I'm going to have to go out of game right now because uh, since it's not in war, I kind of got to show you. I've got, I took some pictures and kind of directed my alliance a little bit on how to do this. So we're going to jump out of game just to a Discord picture here. So um, you can kind of see this is just me post on Discord where I'm telling my alliance uh, kind of what to look for. So the first step is look for a room with a red pulsating target on. See first piccolo, 
pick below with target on medbay. So if, um, I'm sorry, first pick below. I, so what you can see here is during this fight, and you can see this was kind of our battle here, we were down you know, almost 200 points at that point. We came back and won by five, but um, anyway, you get the idea that, uh, you, that there's some coordination here. We can see this red target on the room. So as a play, captains and leaders can do this, and I'll show you how to get that thing to show up in a second. But that you're gonna, when you get in, you're gonna wanna look for this target. So it's like, oh, okay, my alliance is targeting the med bay right now. Now, if you go into that room, one of the next thing I can say is, uh, once in targeted room, look for the defending player with the red border around their team. And then I tell them the second picture below is what I'm talking about. So, and this is how you set that target as a leader. So as a leader, you can click this target right here. You know, you can see that that creates a red border around this particular player. So that's the leader slash captains telling its alliance, attack this person. You can see this one is not red. So that is saying, do not attack this person, even though obviously they have been attacked. But in this particular case, for as an example, we did not have this highlighted to show. I just wanted to show the difference here and what to attack. At the time, it was all hands on deck, kill these two rooms. Um, but just to show the difference between the red and the blue, and you can see this one's highlighted and this one's not. So your alliance is telling you hit this person. And there's a multitude of reasons to do this. If you have both of them, you're, you're trying to kill both the entire room. If you're doing just one, it might be because you're trying to clear out um, that person so you can see an adjacent room and potentially move on. So then the third part is when inside our target room and both defending teams profiles are highlighted, red, um, see third pick below, that means we're trying to destroy the full room. And this is the example of that where it's, okay, you can see same room. I've now highlighted both of these. So I'm telling the Alliance or your captains are telling your Alliance hit both of these people to take this room out. And you can, you can apply multiple targets. Um, we did this in our, um, in our particular, uh, last war where we had, you know, two slash three rooms targeted and certain people targeted so that we could kind of go after them. Um, but this is a big part of this to, to really understand and communicate and coordinate, uh, how you're going to attack as an Alliance. Okay. Now the next thing uh, you guys, this is real basic. Um, and I, pro I don't think I can show you it now. Oh, you know what? I'll just go to the store. Does it actually doesn't show it in here either. Um, but you know what I can do is it's here. So the next part is um, these boosts, defense boosts, which give you you know three deflect every time you pop, uh, put one on a, one of your defenders, and then um, war energy refill. You know this one. Uh, let's see, you can get I guess up to you know 600 of these. Uh, like you saw there, it was um, you know three deflects. Uh, war energy refills. You want to have these so you can get extra attacks. When I'll talk about the number of attacks and how many extra you can get in a second here, but uh, you want to have as much of this as you can because it does add up. I think it gets up to 300. I don't think it gets to 350. I think it gets up to 300. Um, I know I used mine in our last battle, but um, what I mean by it gets up to 300 is it costs 300 of these energy refill credits to be able to reattack. I think it starts at 50 and goes up you know, multitude of times and you can only do it four total times. So it's important that everybody in your alliance is getting these. Uh, you really want to kind of be stacked up on them. If not, you know, it, it can make a difference in the overall battle. Those boosts really, really help on defense, just kind of, you know, making it harder for someone to beat a team and or wasting um, the other, uh, your opposing team's attacks. So, um, you know, you really want to have those in hand. So, and I mentioned, you know, the number of attacks. And I'm gonna switch off game again here. So I did a little, and most of you guys might already know this, but I just did a little, you know, math here, where it was kind of like, you know, you start with two, and this is Alliance War re, uh, energy regen. You start with two energy, it takes three and a half hours to regen. Your max energy is five. Um, I'm just saying hours to get to max without attacking, 10 and a half. Uh, hours to get to max, you know, if you do attack, and I mean immediately. So if you use two of these, you could wait another 17 and a half hours to go back into it to get your final attack. So um, you know, uh, you get seven in by this time, five here, but ultimately the potential energy slash attacks at the end of 24 hours is always eight, just under, just under nine because of the hours remaining under both these scenarios and the potential energy generated in those hours. So, you know, if you, um, if you don't attack right away, you just come back earlier, or if you do attack right away, then, uh, you can come back later and attack. So it's kind of up to each person. It's kind of nice in that regard. So you don't have to spend all day looking at this thing except for the fact that you'd want to boost teams when the other team attacking. 
Um, I, I would like, it'd be nice if, uh, you know, Fox Next would have some type of, I'll call it queue in the system where it's like, you know, you can enter in your queue that you want to boost this team as soon as it comes up. Or you want to boost this team as soon as it comes up. Um, or, you know, you can boost it ahead of time. I don't know, because right now there's a lot of, you know, sitting and watching and waiting for the other team to attack a certain room. And when they do, it's like, okay, that person's about to go down. Get ready for your boost. Get ready for your boost. Okay, they're down. Put the boost up. You know, and it's like, okay, it's like, it's like live war, essentially, which is cool at the end of it. You know, maybe in the last, you know, 30 minutes or hour or something like that, it can prove to be a pretty you know, um, exciting, fun thing as far as playing a game goes. And, you know, we had that happen with our alliance where it was just, you know, it was, it was back and forth the last few hours. And then it came down to the last even 20 minutes where we're, you know, telling anybody who's got attacks, anybody who's got boost, put them in, get ready. You know, just uh, if that team goes down, boost right away. So it makes it a little bit harder. Um, and again, it was pretty exciting. It was great coordination. It was fun. We won by five points, so it proved to be worthwhile, um, which is crazy if you think about it. Five points is literally one slot. Um, so, you know, that type of involvement and dedication, you know, is I don't think sustainable long term. Um, but uh, if Fox Next would consider some sort of boost queue that allows players to boost in a queue and maybe you can only go like one or two boosts deep in that queue, um, meaning that you know, I can't put seven boosts down if I want when I first start, but, you know, I can put two in, which will help cover it, you know, right away. You know, that'd be kind of nice and it takes the sit weight aspect out of it. So anyway, I'm kind of uh, going on a tangent there, but uh, I've also got the total number of attacks, number of rooms, all these type of different things and, you know, the amount of extra attacks you've got. Uh, but you have four refills. This is kind of what I'm talking about. This, so you can really get from eight to twelve attacks. I saw some people at thirteen. I'm not exactly sure. You know, maybe my math's wrong here. Someone can kind of tell me that. But you know, let me know. You know, if there's some way to get thirteen, I couldn't quite figure that out. But uh, anyway, the point is, is that you can get eight attacks from just energy and another, you know, f four refills from that. So, you, so you really want to have these things, you know, ready to be uh, kind of going in every single war. You know, and as people are learning this, um, these strategies, um, the approaches, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking more in generalities here and kind of the concepts, the macro level, you could get really micro here, but the truth is, is that for every micro, there's going to be a, every micro strategy, there's going to be a counter to it. Um, Fox next has done a really good job here of kind of making a paper, rock, scissors approach again, which is, you know, how they make money is you want the paper, rock, scissors approach. So there is not really a huge meta. They do it generally decent in arena granted, you know, for the most part, it's brotherhood, but you know, it's, there's a brotherhood shield defenders and even tech kind of, you know, uh, circular approach there of one beating the other and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that's going to happen with, uh, Alliance war as well, where it's just, you know, if you, um, and again, these are two bad examples, but if you turtle, you know, the counter strategy is A. If you go full on, a, you know, attack, then, you know, that counter strategy is B. And if you, you know, have your best rooms in the middle defended well, then strategy C to attack that. And, so, you know, it depends what each opponent does and you won't know until you get in with that opponent and you don't even figure it out because of the fog of war as you're going. So you really have to kind of adjust on the fly and just, do what you think is best for you and your alliance based on your members. And that's ultimately the thing that I'm trying to get through in this video is it's there is going to be some general guidelines that we as content creators or we as, you know, who speak about, you know, X being, you know, experts on this or knowing something or guides or whatever you want to call it. Because I definitely don't claim to be an expert. That's sure as all the truth. Otherwise, I'd be, you know, way higher in, you know, a lot of different aspects in the game. But I'm just not, you know, I just, I play, I have fun, I love my alliance, that type of thing. So, you know, again, figure out what you and your alliance, what works best for you guys, um, based on what you've got. And then, you know, kind of stick with it, you know, uh, ebb and flow as you go and learn what, you know, kind of becomes the best thing for you guys. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. You know, sometimes you have a great strategy, but you're just going up against a, you know, Legion of Cabal type opponent and there's nothing you could have done about it. So, you know, does that mean you scrap your strategy? Not necessarily. It just means that you just got a shitty roll the dice, you know, and it sucks, but um, it's just kind of the aspect of the game. So, uh, you know, and again, I mentioned that you, you really need to know the power and the buffs of the rooms. Um, I'm still here in the store, but, you know, you've really got to know what each one of these rooms do. So, yeah, like I'm saying, you've got to really understand the buffs of each one of these rooms 
you know, flight deck, um, you know, you can kind of see here, there's a, you know, I know that I'm getting some buffs here from global and I'm getting a security buff, um, which is, you know, next to it. You've got to know how each one of these rooms play. That is super, super critical. Um, and just kind of, you know, understanding how to approach every war that you're in. Okay, now the last thing that I want to talk about, which is kind of cool, and I didn't realize this till today, is that Fox Next added a new filter or two to, to this situation. War attack and war defense. You can see them right here. And when you click these, when you click war attack, it's going to show you exactly who you've got left for attacking. And when you click war defense, it's going to show who you have on defense. So that you can, you know, kind of figure out what your potential teams are. You can kind of look at them all in one bit. Um, I think that's a really nice kind of filter just... Um, you know, it's not it's not going to, you know, be a game changing thing, but it is just it's a neat dynamic that they added. I personally really like it. Um, you know, I wish that I think another thing that they really need to do is um, add more team slots. I just want to look at this real quick. I'm going to sit in about seven mil for this blitz. I think that should be pretty safe for top 1500. And I even blitz that much. Um, but um, more team slots. So all of my team slots, I've got, we still got only 15. I got one remaining. You know, the, these bottom two were just ones I was using on Ultimate, or I'm actually just using this one only on Ultimus now. Um, I used to use these, I call them the Storm Bengers, but that was just, just took a lot more coordination and sometimes would need heals. But all these other teams I've got here are just random blitz teams I use that, you know, just kind of came along as I went. Well, now I'd really like to have, honestly, another 10 slots you know maybe 15 slots to uh um you know put my or maybe call them alliance slots you know where you can create alliance you know and maybe it's only in the alliance war section where you can really create you know teams for that section because um that part of it is sometimes difficult to manage at least for me so i don't know if it helped you guys or not but uh, i know it would help for me so anyway that's all i got for today i hope this was helpful um again you know i'm really just telling you that there's a lot of different aspects. I'm trying to approach this from a macro view um, as opposed to a micro view because I think that if you get the macro first and understand that, you know, you need to know your room layouts. You need to understand the buffs associated with those rooms and what works best for those. Where are you, as an alliance, putting your stronger defenders or, you know, are your stronger defenders attackers? How do you want to split that up? Um, on top of that, how does each individual person determine what they want to put um, in those rooms and how does that affect you as alliance as a whole? You know, then as you're attacking, what's your coordination aspect? What are you doing? Are you, you know, targeting specific rooms? Are you using the tools in game? Are you using Discord? Those are the things that I'm telling you, really start there. Don't, you know, if you start by, well, this is the meta, meta defense or this is the, you know, um, best room layout. I, I'm not convinced that's going to, you know, lead you to long-term success. So figure out what's best for you. Understand those general concepts you know, ebb and flow a little bit, but don't give up on good strategies just because you run into a, you know, powerhouse like, you know, uh, Wakanda Black or uh, Legion of Cabal or anything like that. So anyway, if you like what you see here, you want to see more strategy, more discussions, uh, please click that subscribe button as well as hammer down on that like button. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks.